Rocket League has two amazing in-game tools to help you get better as fast as possible. Those in-game tools are free play and custom training. Most of you watching this right now probably have spent a good amount of time using one of these tools. But when higher ranked players give advice to lower ranks, they'll often say something like, just go into custom training, or just go into free play. Alright, let's do it. Am I better yet? Oh, I get it. They want you to like, drive around and hit the ball, right? Okay. My point is, it's pretty unclear what you're supposed to do with these tools in order to improve yourself as fast as possible. Because there's definitely a right way of practicing and a wrong way of practicing. So in this video, I'm going to start off by going over how to train properly in free play and then move on over to custom training. And make sure you stick to the end because I'm finishing off with a super useful training technique that I came up with that will help you learn to play way faster. Lastly, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click that button so you don't miss any more helpful videos in the future. And without further delay, this is how you train properly in Rocket League. There are plenty of specific drills you can work on in free play like the wall bounce game or the mini pad drill, but for this video I'm just going to cover how you should practice in free play if you don't have anything particular in mind. Let me know if you would want to see a video covering free play drills in the future though. Anyway, many people use free play to warm up before going into online matches, which yeah, it's probably the best way to warm up, but that shouldn't be the only thing you use it for. Free play is super useful for even just improving your mechanics. I think of free play as where I go to if I don't have very good ball control. This includes air dribbles, regular dribbling, bounce dribbling, and pretty much anything that doesn't include a situation where the ball is already flying at me from a certain direction. If you don't have any particular skill in mind that you want to improve in, such as the types of dribblings I just mentioned, you can always use free play to improve the speed of your game. So how do you do this? Well, if you ever watch a pro go into free play to practice, chances are this is what they'll be doing. The first step is to hit the ball with some power. The second step is to also hit the ball with some power. And the third step is, again, hit the ball with some power. I think you get the point. No matter how you do it, you want to keep smacking the ball as hard as possible, then immediately follow it up with another powerful hit as fast as you can and keep as much momentum as possible. Try and make each touch as powerful as you can, but still make the time between each touch as short as possible by conserving your momentum as much as you can. You can experiment around with holding power slide to keep your momentum going a certain way. It's pretty fun once you get into it. You can use wave dashes, half lips, aerials to meet the ball faster as it rolls up on the wall, anything you can think of that will move it around faster. You want to go so fast that you'll be forcing yourself to miss. That's how you know you're getting better. Doing this for half an hour every time you open up the game will tremendously improve your skills from your game speed to overall mechanics. And like I mentioned, there are a ton of super useful drills you can do in free play alone, but I'll save that for a future video. Bam! Free play? Check. That's out of the way. Now let's talk about custom training. There are so many inefficient ways to practice with custom training, it's just unbelievable. First off, let's talk about offensive training packs. There's two main things that I see people do wrong with these. One of them is obvious, and you've probably heard it before. The first one is that people wait until the ball is either closer to them or closer to the ground before they hit it. Most of you probably realize this, but if you really want training packs to help you, you've got to hit the ball as early as possible. If you're only plat or gold, hitting a redirect shot way back here and closer to the ground may be just fine for you, but by the time you get up to diamond or champ, people are going to easily cut you off before you can get the touch. That's why you've got to hit it as early and high up as possible before the other team can get to it, even if you're only gold. Developing these good habits now is going to make it way easier for you to rank up in the long term. I wish I had known this when I was first starting because I would have had a much easier time ranking up through champ if I didn't have to break these bad habits. The second thing I see people doing wrong is they jump way too early to hit the ball at the correct angle. This is a huge issue because you're not even breaking the rule of making the shot easy for you by letting it drop too low before you hit it. However, you would never jump this early in an actual game. That would just be the pre-jump of the century right there. Yeah, you're getting to it pretty fast, but in a real game situation, you should never decide that you're going to go that early, because if you suddenly decide that you don't want to continue going for it right here, well, too bad, because you've already jumped and committed, so you have to wait until you land. In a real game situation, you should be waiting till you're way closer before you jump in the air. The reason for this is so you have time to turn back even once you're this close to the ball, so you're not really getting to the ball any slower, but you're also not fully committing until you're way closer, so it's way less of a risk. Because of this, when you're doing your training packs, you should be waiting on the ground to jump until the last moment before you would need to tap the brakes to still hit the ball. What I mean by that is this is jumping too late because you need to slow down a ton in order to hit the ball and not go flying past it. And this is jumping too early because you still had a ton of room to drive on the ground without needing to slow yourself down to hit the ball. 
this right here would be the perfect place to jump from, since you're not getting to the ball any slower, and in a real game situation, you still had the option to make the last second decision to turn back at this point in time. Whereas if you had jumped earlier, you would have needed to wait until you landed from your aerial to recover back on defense. It's a little bit of a complex topic, but that's essentially the best way to explain it. So to recap, for offensive training packs, make sure you hit the ball as early as possible, but you're not jumping way too earlier for an easier angle on the shot. Most of you watching probably don't spend much time on defensive training packs, but if you're diamond or lower, you probably should. I see it so often that people at those ranks are able to make some sort of save, but they can't place it in a safe spot for their team to follow it up. Which actually leads me to the most common mistake in doing these training packs, which is getting the save just to save it. The thing about defense is that getting the save is only the first step. A good save is one that puts it towards the corner or just in a spot where the opponents can't get a follow-up shot. A bad save is in fact a save, but it puts the ball in a position for the offense to take another easy shot. So when you're doing these defense training packs, focus on saving the ball with a specific purpose to not only keep it from going in your goal, but also touch it to either a corner or out in the air where the other team can't follow it up. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, I made a super useful training pack to help you learn to play faster. The thing about this pack is that it forces you to hit these shots in the correct way, but there's two rules you need to follow for it to work. First one is that your first touch on the ball needs to happen on or before that final beep of the countdown. If you touch it just after, that doesn't count, you didn't get there fast enough. You can check yourself by turning up your audio in game and listening for which sound comes first, the last beep of the countdown or you hitting the ball. The second rule is that you need to go grab the mini pad that you're lined up with before jumping for the ball. Obviously you can't actually grab it since you have infinite boost, but get close enough to it to where you would have grabbed it if it were possible. So on this one for example, I would need to go straight to this mini pad before I can jump up for the ball since that's the one that I'm lined up with. And then I need to make sure that my first touch on the ball happens before or on the last beep of the countdown. And that's it! When you follow these rules on this pack, you'll notice it suddenly becomes really hard. It forces you to have super fast aerials and hit the shots the way they would actually happen in a real game. No other training packs force you to do that. Realistically, you probably can't complete this whole pack following both of these rules unless you're at least champ 3. Even then, some of you probably can't do it. But hey, if you can, props to you. Let me know in the comments. This training pack is even really hard for most grand champs, and players at the pro level could even use this to improve their game. It's that tough of a training pack. If you're only platinum or around there, forget about needing to hit the ball before the last beep, but still try and hit it as early as possible, or else that'll just defeat the purpose. The code for the pack is on screen now again, and it's also in the description if you want to copy and paste it. I highly recommend trying it out. Now I'm going to show you guys each individual shot, how they're supposed to be done in case you're still confused, and also to prove that, yes, every one of these is possible. So for the first one, you have to go and grab that mini pad there, and then you can jump for the ball. The fact you need to hit it before the last beep on the timer forces you to hit it as early as possible. Pretty simple task, but it's hard to get down. For the second one, it's that mini pad right there. Drive in a straight line right towards it, and then you can turn and jump for the ball. For this third one, it's actually the big pad you need to drive to, so grab that and jump up for it. This one is pretty hard to get a solid hit on net before the last beep, so I usually like to double tap it to make sure I can get the first touch in time. For number 4, same thing, grab that mini pad straight ahead and jump for the ball. I think you get the point, so I'm just going to let the rest of these shots run through so you can see for yourself and make sure you're doing them right. And there you go! There's proof! It's possible, I promise. Like I said, if you flat out can't hit the ball before that last beep on the counter, you can disregard that rule, but that should show you how much faster you can actually be. And you should still be trying to hit it as early as possible, so it doesn't defeat the purpose. 
Also, before the video ends, someone from my Discord generously and anonymously gifted 5,000 credits to give away to the community. So if you want a chance at winning that, all you need to do is join the Discord, select your roles, and react to the message here. Once you do that, you're all set. And lastly, hit subscribe so you don't miss any awesome future videos. Other than that, have an awesome day. Guess and they get it, cause look at me now and they look at yourself in the mirror. I know they doubted my thesis, but they doubted Jesus, and right now I'm making it clear. Clearly, these people don't know where they're going, and lately I feel like the man with the map. I got this shit out the mud, you could give me the word, and I'll probably give it right back. Back of the bus, I was scraping the change. Back in my head, I was living a life. Back of my job, I was.